In the last video, we set up the project that contains the assets for this tutorial series. In this video, we're going to briefly explain Entities, the Asset Editor, Script Canvas, and some of its nodes, as well as UI Canvas and the creation of the main menu for our game. Begin by opening your clone project. Once opened, you'll be presented with the Welcome to O3DE Editor window. Within this window, we can create new levels for our game. Toward the top of this window, click the Create New button. This will open the New Level window. Under Name, enter Level 01, then click the OK button. Now that we have a new level, let's create a new entity that will house the components for our Start menu. On the left-hand side, locate and right-click within our Entity Outliner. Then select the Create Entity option. Next, for readability, let's rename our entity Start Menu. Make sure that the entity we just created is selected, and then, on the right-hand side of the screen, within the Entity Inspector's Name field, enter the name Start Menu. Next, we'll add the UI Canvas Asset Rep component to our Start Menu entity. This component is used to associate the UI we will create with this entity. Click on the Add Component button, then in the search field type UI. Then in the Available option, select UI Canvas Asset Rep. Now that the component has been added, let's open our UI editor. Within the UI Canvas Asset Rep component, locate and click on the Open in UI Editor button. With our editor now open, let's begin by saving our new UI canvas with the name Main Menu. Next, let's give our main menu some style with a background image. On the left-hand side of the screen, locate the Hierarchy panel, right-click within it, and select the New option. Then, from its submenu, Empty Element. Let's rename the element that we just created Background. On the right-hand side of the screen, in the Properties panel, locate the Name field. Within it, enter Background. Next, let's add an image component to our background entity. Below the name field in our properties panel, click on the add component button. In the list of options, select image. Within our new image component, locate the sprite path field and click on its folder icon. This will open the pick streaming image search window. At the top of this window, locate the search field and enter the word splash screen. Once the splash screen.jpg image appears, select it and click on the OK button. Let's expand this image so that it fills the entirety of our main menu's background area. In our Properties panel, locate the Transform 2D component. Within the Anchors subsection, locate and click on the Expand All Anchors button. Next, let's create the button that the player will use to start the game. In order to save time, the button we'll use will be a pre-created template. In the top left-hand corner of the UI editor, find and click on the New button. Hover over the Select Element from Slice Library option, and within its submenu, select Button. The button appears a bit small, so let's double up its size. Back in the Transform 2D component, locate the Scale property and enter 2 for both its X and Y values. Next, the text on our button currently reads Button. Let's change it so that it's a bit more informative. Select the text element located below our button. On the right-hand side of the screen, locate the text field. Within the text component, let's change the text button so it reads Click to Start. For good measure, we should rename our button. Select your button element, then in its Properties field, name it Start Button. There's a helpful Lua script that we can use to ensure that our cursor will always appear on the screen while this menu is displayed in-game. Click in the open area below our button to deselect it. Then click the Add Component button and select the Lua script option. Within the Lua script component now added, locate the Click on Pick Lua script button. With Pick Lua script window now open, begin to type Display in its search field. A display mouse cursor .lua script will appear in the dropdown. Select it and click the OK button. Now save your menu and let's return to our editor so we can begin the process of scripting our menu. Back in our editor, ensure that your start menu is selected in the Entity Outliner. Next, on the right-hand side of our editor in the Entity Inspector, make sure that your main menu is loaded within your UI Canvas Asset Ref component. We'd like our main menu to load once the game starts, so make sure that the Load Automatically option is checked on. Next, let's test that our main menu appears correctly in our viewport. In the upper right-hand corner of our editor, locate and press the Play button. Excellent. Our menu looks great. Press the play button again to exit play mode. Next, let's create the script that will control the functionality of our menu. Ensure that the start menu entity is still selected. Then, in the Entity Inspector, click on the Add Component button. In its search field, type Script Canvas. Once Script Canvas appears in the component list, select it. Let's open our Script Canvas editor by clicking in the Open in Script Canvas editor button. Once open, let's save our script as main menu. We'd like the functionality of our button to exist the moment our menu appears in our game. So let's add an on graph start node. Right click within our graph area and within the node search field type on graph start. Once on graph start appears below the timing section, select it. 
Next, let's load our canvas once our graph has started. Drag the out pin from our on graph start note. This will again open our note finder. This time type load canvas in the search field and select it from the UI canvas asset reference list. Now that we have a reference to the canvas, the script is attached to, let's create a variable that will store its reference. In the upper right hand corner in the variable manager, click the create variable button. For the variable type, select entity ID and for its name, enter canvas. Next, left click and drag our variable from the variable manager onto your graph. From the pop-up menu, select set canvas. We selected this option because we want to store a reference to our canvas in this variable. Make sure to connect the appropriate pins. Next, we want to find the button element that we created earlier and use it to unload this canvas from our scene and start our game. Right click on our graph and search for the find element by name node. Once created, make sure to connect the appropriate in and out pins. For the name text field, let's briefly return to our UI editor. While here, double check that we have the correct spelling for our button element. Back in Script Canvas, enter the name of your button in the name field. Next, let's add the on button click node to our graph. This node will register when the button is clicked. Next, connect the appropriate pins as displayed here. Once our button is pressed, we want to remove or unload our canvas from the scene. We're going to use the unload canvas node for this. Again, right click on the graph and in the search field type unload and from the UI Canvas Manager subsection, select Unload Canvas. Connect the pins as displayed here. Then within our Variable Manager, drag the Canvas variable we created earlier into the Unload Canvas node Canvas Entity field. Next, let's return to our editor and create the script events that will control when our game will start and end. Back in our editor, within the main toolbar, locate and click on the Tools option. From the drop-down menu, select Asset Editor. One of the functions of the Asset Editor is to author script events. Scripts use events to communicate with each other. To create a script event, locate and click on the file dropdown from within the asset editor. Next, from its dropdown menu, select new. Then from its submenu, select script events. In the name field, enter start game. Then let's create our events by clicking on the plus symbol next to the event sub option. Once created, click the dropdown arrow next to the start game event. And in its name field, enter start game. Below it, locate the additional parameter field and click its plus symbol and again expand its name field and enter the text game over. Let's add one last parameter by again clicking the plus symbol next to parameter and in its field enter level win. Save your script event as start game. Let's return to script canvas and connect the two new events we just created. In the left hand side within our node palette, locate and expand the script event and start game sections. Drag your start game script events node onto the graph and connect the out and in pins. Save your script and let's return to our editor. Back in our editor, press the play button to launch our menu. Once your menu appears, click the start button to remove our menu from the scene. In the next tutorial, we'll take a look at further connecting the components for our game.